Yeah. What's good, you two? It's your boy Juice with two eyes. Hold on. All my shit's a little fucked up right now. We're getting it together. <laughs> um, am I actually a car expert? No. But I feel like I'm going to be the best car expert for you on um, YouTube, you know? <laughs> so, am I a car expert for YouTube? Yes, I am. All right, let's jump into why Tesla's Model X was the very first SUV to receive to receive a perfect car crash test rating. That's super amazing. I've never, I don't own a Tesla. I should own a Honda. <laughs> but uh, 2003, you know. But it is what it is. Let's jump into it and let's just see really what goes on with uh, um, how they decide on a perfect rating for, for a crash test. This Model X refuses to roll over. Mm. Unlike most SUVs, which tend to roll over with ease, the Model X continues to return to an upright position. Here's why the Model X was the first SUV to receive a perfect crash test rating. All right, let's see. When it comes to vehicle safety, oh. size matters. So it's not uncommon for SUVs to be generally safer than your standard sedan. Do any of you car guys out there, because a majority of you watching this know way more than me, to just be honest. Um, how many cars do you think that they go through on average? Uh, on average, how many cars do you think they go through through the crash test and stuff before they actually put the cars out there and stuff? I would say probably at least a hundred, right? They got at least do a hundred different tests, right? Let me know down in the comment section if you got like a pretty good guess or if you know like a pretty good accurate number. Let me know down in the comment section. However, they tend to have one big shortcoming. Rollovers. Damn. SUVs are notorious for having a high center of gravity, mm -hmm. causing them to roll over when put into tight maneuvering situations or a side impact. Rollovers can result in the partial or full ejection of passengers from the vehicle, increasing the chances of injury Big fact. or death. In 2016, rollovers happened in 1% of serious crashes in passenger vehicles, mm. but accounted for one-third of collision-related deaths. Over the past three decades, automakers have been able you to would reduce think. the frequency of roll To be honest with you, you would think that an SUV would be way safer than a car because you got to think, when you're driving an SUV or when you're driving a car, like, you're sitting up. You know what I mean? Not actually, actually sitting up like this, but, I mean, you're driving a regular how you would drive a car, but you're actually up. You're sitting up. You're more, you're more than less looking down on majority cars, and you would think just because you're higher up, and that your car, that the SUVs are a lot bigger than what a car is on the average, you would think that you would just be a lot more safer in an SUV. That's, that's at least what I thought. Corpus and vehicles with technology and more stable designs. However, once a serious impact occurs, it's just basic physics. A higher center of gravity increases the likelihood of a car tipping or rolling over. Okay. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, is the only organization that tests rollover resistance. They also test frontal crashes and side impacts from a pole and barrier. After each test, Ooh. they measure readings from a dummy to determine how much damage oh, it's a, a dummy. Oh, okay. is likely to sustain. They use this data to determine a safety rating in each category and an overall safety rating for the vehicle. Can we see Amongst a test? many luxury features, the Model X hosts active safety technology, such as collision avoidance systems and automatic do, emergency braking. Do any of you guys own a Tesla out there? Because if you guys do own a Tesla, this big ass touchscreen right there, I was always like wondering and I was always curious. First of all, how much does it cost to like get it replaced if like you break it or something? You know what I mean? Second of all, do they malfunction often? Because I mean, no car is gonna be perfect. I mean. A million people can have a, a five-star review for it, and there could be a hundred people out there that say it's completely trash because they've had a whole bunch of bugs with it, a whole bunch of problems with it. But on the average, though, are they pretty good? Or are they, like, pretty responsive when you touch it? Does it delay a lot? Does it drag a lot? Kind of like an iPad or a, or a tablet that has way too much data on it or way too many pictures and there's no storage left. Because um, I, I would think all the touching that you're doing on it and you're driving, so you're not really trying to touch it soft you're just kind of pressing the button or not really the button you're just pressing the screen do, do they do they are they durable do they last well do they have any of you guys cracked yours or anything because i know i can't afford one not not even not even nowhere close and i may never be able to afford one but and i don't even think that that would be like one of the cars that i would buy personally but like 
how well is it built though? Like overall, not even not even just just the just the touchscreen aspect. Is it, how how are the Teslas if you do on one? Like, what, what's really going on with it? Is, are they comfortable? Like from a personal aspect, are they comfortable? Is it easy to see out of? Do you have any blind spots? And, and, and the big thing for me would be that's a whole lot of touching. That's a whole lot of touchscreen. First of all, I don't know if. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know if I if I could buy one because I'd be kind of scared that that motherfucker gonna malfunction. I'm betting you it's not cheap to get that fixed. I guarantee you it's not. It's not like getting uh get getting your brake pads fixed. It's it's not like getting a new exhaust on your car. You know what I mean? It's it's probably not even like getting your tires replaced. That motherfucker probably I would assume it's a couple thousand at least just to get a crack fix. It's a couple thousand. It's probably. 10, 20,000 just to get the whole thing fixed, you know? And shit, it's probably 200 to 1,000 to get a regular dash fixed. And it's got to be at least 10, 20,000 to get one of those things fixed. Just let me know down in the comment section if you do have a uh, um, a Tesla a Model X or just a Tesla in general. Let, let us know down in the comment section, especially for those that are thinking about buying one from a real person's aspect, not someone that's just doing reviews and that gets paid to do reviews on cars and bashes them for no reason or someone that uh is appraising them just to appraise them just because they're being asked that someone that actually drives it every day someone that, that does drive one and has a real opinion on it and gives you real real stories real situations if you got ever situations with one stories if you've been in a crash hopefully you was okay afterwards just let us know down in the comment section below on how every, on how that's going such as collision avoidance systems and automatic emergency braking but what sets the model x apart is its design like other Teslas, the Model X has a large, rigid battery pack located on the floor of the vehicle. Uh huh. This gives the Model X a much lower center of gravity than your average SUV. True. In the event of and what they mean by high sense of gravity is that there's a lot of weight up top and there's a lot of weight in the middle. So when there's so, when there's so much weight in the middle and there's so much weight up top that when you do get hit, it's a lot easier for it to roll over because the car isn't balanced out. It's not elongated, balanced out. That does make a lot of sense that that car battery battery is right underneath in the middle to where it holds it down too to where there's a lot of weight down at the bottom of that to where it's not so top heavy up at the top end and it's not super easy to roll over that does make a lot of sense of a collision that would normally cause an suv to roll over this would happen instead but rollovers are just one aspect of the safety test since the model x is an electric vehicle there's no need for a mechanical component in the hood of the car this allows for a much larger crumple zone to absorb energy from a frontal crash it also True. has specially made side sills that absorb energy in addition to its rigid side pillars. These features help reduce the force exerted on passengers and increases their protection. But if you don't have $80,000 laying around for mm. a Model X, there's still plenty of SUVs out there with excellent safety ratings. When it was talking about for the side panels and and, and uh, the safety requirement that, that they're talking about and how they have... Um, a special made one. What what are they referring to? Let me know down in the comment section below. I'm gonna kind of ramble on just for a second, just to try, just I'm just gonna talk with you guys for a minute, just talk about the Tesla. Um, compared to a few uh a few other SUVs for me down in the comment section. Like I said, I can't afford one at all, but I'm just kind of curious with them. Um, compare it to like a Tahoe, you know, com like to to like the affordable. Like don't don't compare it to a Range Rover. You can. But don't just compare it to a Range Rover, you know, because Range Rovers are built phenomenally. You know, they're, they're built down to the T. And, I mean, I'm sure they try to make our car, every car built down to the T, but not every car has that budget to where the car is 80 grand. You can go buy a Tahoe for 20, 30K. You can probably buy one for 45K, 2018, all, all luxuried out and stuff. Let us know down, let me know down in the comment section about that. Um, also, talk about it. Do they handle in the snow? Because I know they drive theirself. How does that work in the snow? Does it like automatically put itself at a lower speed? Because there's no way you can travel at the at the regular rate. How how how, do, how the how the hell does the Tesla like figure out how fast it's gonna go on a road? You know, is that like a setting that you have to do on the touchscreen that you have to do that manually? Does the Tesla already know? Because that would be a lot of trust that you would have to have in that Tesla to not you know that'd be kind of scared to drive in the snow but that's really all i got to talk about let me know down in the comment section if you own a tesla and how it is uh, subscribe if you guys want
if you got if you guys would like me to uh react to more um car videos like this just let me know and we definitely can do it on the channel we just do we this channel just does everything that everyone wants honestly um appreciate you guys for tuning in follow me on instagram and twitter merch comes out in a week if you want to uh check that out just follow me on instagram the pictures are also on youtube and underneath the community uh tab and uh yeah i'm out this thing